Good evening, church. How are we doing tonight? Good. Can we stand and worship together? We should all know this song if we can sing it together. lift a shout of praise to the Lord this evening. You are the light to my heart and my soul, God. Thank you. I stand when 
everything around me shaking. I've never been more glad. I put my faith in Jesus. Cause he's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. So I would he and I've still got joy in chaos I've got peace that makes no sense but I won't be going under I'm not held by my own strength cause I build my Flow in this place, fill our hearts with your love. 
atmosphere is changed now. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Evidence is all around. Yes. The Spirit of the
Okay, while they're bringing the pulpit out, I just have a, an announcement. I also, after I'm done with the announcements, I'm going to ask uh, Luke Miller and Miles Tankley just to get ready. I want to just um, have them come up and give a, a brief testimony about the, uh, the Easter play. Um, before the announcement, do you, is there anyone here that's for the very first time coming into our service and in, 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 uh, in the back there? Thank you so much for coming. Anyone else? Just raise your hand for me. Did I miss anyone else? Thank you so much for coming. Uh, we have a welcome packet for you, and um, we just encourage uh, you to come out to service uh, with us um, again on Sunday. So um, speaking of Sunday service, Sunday on April 14th, the evening service, there's going to be the first family life night, family life night. So that's going to be designed to build up our church families. So we'd like to encourage people to come out um, especially on Sunday night, April 14th, that evening service, there will be um, a family life night. Details to come. And if you'd like to find out more information about it, there is on the events page um, on the website, ggwo.org slash events. You can find out some more details about it. But just um, encourage you to come. Bring your families. Bring everyone out on uh, that, uh, that, that evening, April 14th. Um, so could I ask? Yes, Miles and Luke... Are they here tonight? I mentioned them on Sunday night service and they weren't here, but now they're here. They, um, they, they sacrificed, because they were kind of, they had a lot of lines to memorize. And they, they worked the cafe on Sunday uh, mornings. And I mentioned this last uh, Sunday, but they would, they sacrificially gave up their Sundays like entirely because they would work the cafe in the morning, the shift in the morning shift, right? And then we'd, we'd wait for them to come close out the cafe, come to the chapel to do rehearsal. And they had a lot of lines together, right? So we, we did like the, the whole show with them. And then they would stay for the service, and then they'd be here for the caf, working the cafe in the evening service. So they, got, they would come out here at like 4 a.m., and then they'd get home not until like, you know, 12 a.m. Is that right? Something like that. So, What's up, church? Um, my name is Luke Miller. Uh, if, I played uh, Joseph in the play. If you don't recognize me without my hair and makeup, I was the one that loved to eat. So, yeah, it seemed like the part fit me pr pretty well. So, um, something I really enjoyed about the play was uh, um, something I strongly believe in is being able to use our gifts for the Lord. Um, 1 Peter 4.10 says that uh, we each have a, have a received a gift, and uh, that we should use it to bless and minister to each other. And uh, by all means, I, I'm not a uh, Hollywood or Broadway actor, but uh, I love making people smile, laugh, and uh, carrying the Lord's joy um, anywhere I go. So it was a blessing to be able to be a part of that in that sense. Um, my favorite part of the play, uh, though it was fun just messing around up here with Miles and throwing my bread around and throwing a temper tantrum, uh, <laughs> Or grabbing Ben's face, and <laughs> yeah, if you've seen it, you've seen it. But uh, it got intimate at times. But uh, my favorite part of the play by far was uh, after each play, me, Miles, and Avery would be behind the curtains back here, and uh, um, whoever the pastor was would be up here giving a salvation call or an altar call, and uh, we would all have a little spot every single show and just peek our eyes right through, and just seeing the people come forward and saying, yes, I want you, Jesus. I, I, want your, I want your love. I want a relationship with you. Um, it was just an absolute blessing to be a part of that, being a, a vessel for the, for the kingdom, you know. Um, yeah, an absolute blessing to be a part of this and loved every moment of it. So, yeah. Uh, hi, guys. My name is Miles. Um, I play Cleopas in the play. Just a yeah, I was, uh, me and Luke are the dynamic duo. I was the kind of more serious, you know, ready to go one, and Luke's like holding back. Anyways, if you saw the play, you saw it. Um, but yeah, it's just, ever since I've, I've been able to do the Easter play, it's always been a blessing. Um, just to be able to minister to the church, you know, um, through the, the, that's one of our greatest outreaches that we do here. I just remember seeing it as a kid, and, and then being able to be a part of it is, is even greater. Um, 
you know, just to piggyback off what uh, Luke said, I think the best part for sure is adding souls to the kingdom. You know, that's why we're here. That's why we're a body. Um, just peeking our heads through the curtain, you know, just seeing people, even like if the, even if, you know, a half raised hand, God touched their heart somewhere, you know, and, you know, wherever they may be, you know, right now, hopefully they're spreading the word. Hopefully they, they enjoyed it and they'll come back and tell people about next year. But um, it's truly just a blessing to be a part of this church. Um, I want to thank everyone that makes the place possible. Pastor Steve, Avery, um, Leah, thank you guys for just the leadership and the guidance. Um, and yeah, I mean, we had a blast. You know, we got to play ourselves in a sense, but, you know, and by no means are we <laughs> any professional actors, but, um, you know, just be able to, to, to be called by God and to allow him to, to use our gifts and, um, and just minister to the body. And uh, yeah, that's all I had to say. Thanks, guys. I know Pastor Steve is writing a show just with them in mind. No, I don't. I don't know if that's true. Um, but we wanted, we wanted to do a wrap with um, anyone that was involved in the show uh, of any kind. If you were uh, helping out with, um, you know, you were in the cast or you were in the AV, we'd love to do a wrap um, if you can, if you can stay after service. So that'll be after the service. We'll do that uh, here in the chapel. Um, Pastor Taggart, is it okay if you pray for the offering? Hey, so I'm Pastor Taggart. What's up, church? I was not in the play. <clears throat> so uh, we, uh, on Tuesday night, we teach a, a, a class in the Bible College on church administration. And we had a really good class last night. And uh, one of the things we said was uh, one of the uh, sort of hazards of the Christian life sometimes is that people that we look up to and that we value their lives and thoughts towards us very much sometimes that they uh, let us down or they misunderstand us. And it's very, very difficult uh, sometimes when that happens on, a, on rare occasions, but it, it, it does happen and it will happen. And I was just, we were talking about that last night and um, like how, how do I deal with that uh, when, it, when, when that happens in my life? And I think one of the, one of the tools that I have uh, to think about that is that I look at the, the big picture. Um, I, not just that one incident, but I look at the, the sum total of what churches, and this church in particular, have meant in my life. And I'm just like amazingly, amazingly thankful for how God has used this local assembly just to help me in my life. Like when I, when they, when I first you know, came to this church you know, some, some time ago, I didn't know anything. I mean, I was born again. I knew that. I knew I had memorized a few Bible verses. I had some, some, some doctrines. A few doctrines were squared away. But in terms of how to live a Christian life, I, like, I like knew nothing. And this church was uh, kind to me uh, when I had nothing to offer. Uh, this church taught me. Uh, this church has put up with mistakes and damage, uh, mistake after mistake. I met my wife in this church. Uh, this church uh, has, yes, yes. If, if you were a, a GGCA teacher that taught one of my children, raise your hand. I know they're, they're here, right? You see, there we, see you, you folks are heroes, heroes. And I'm, I'm just so thankful for, for all of this. And just, just to this day, it's just the, like the greatest joy of my life when it's like we feel we have nothing, but we walk into the body and the body edifies itself. God gives us a portion for you, and God gives you a portion for me. And we have the amazing, just amazing, amazing um, pulpit ministry here. And I honestly, I just feel like that the pastors that God has given us, uh, it's, I feel very, very, very privileged to be in a ministry just with the quality and the intensity of the life that we are shown here, that we, we aspire to and we follow, people whose faith I can follow. It's just such, such a huge, huge privilege. So let's just be very, very thankful tonight, God. We do ask you to bless. I just breathe on this offering, God. Uh, breathe on uh, Greater Grace World Outreach, Lord, this great, great local assembly, God. Uh, bless us, God. Pour out your life on us. Take us forward. 
And uh, just be with us, Lord, as never before. We pray in your name. Amen.
sweet. Those are our three sisters. Huh? Wow, beautiful. Great. All right, so uh, turn with me, please, to Luke chapter, no, Philippians, sorry, Philippians 4, just for a few minutes, and I asked Pastor Chris Arman to share tonight on prayer. Today is prayer day, and also I'd like to say rejoicing day. A uh, day of rejoicing. Sun is shining above the clouds, and and uh, it's so beautiful up there. I am sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, so we have. Uh, you know, when I when I heard the brother the 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 team sing, and I'm thinking of Miles. Uh, going to Greater Grace uh, Christian Academy, and and then I see the girls here singing, and and um, the team, and uh, and I think about how what Pastor Taggart said about being thankful uh, for uh, the lives and the teaching. So uh, when God teaches us, guides us, guidance is important in your life to be guided uh, in your life. And um, God is our guide, even unto death, in Psalm 48. And he will direct us. He orders our footsteps and gives us his spirit. And we learn how to live, like Pastor Taggart said. So... Uh, I, I love that that theme, actually, just rejoicing a lot in life and being thankful for so many things that God has given to us. And uh, these young men, you know, how did they say it? Oh, hello, church. Yeah. Hello, my name is Luke. Luke Miller. What? What up, church? What up? <laughs> What up, church? Okay. So, uh, and then their hearts, you know, being behind the curtain and looking out to see what's the effect of their, of the play. And then the many, many salvations, uh, many people coming, asking questions. And we would say, uh, well, what about the system of operating and and we think, what about the mystical part of God's work? What about prayer? And, well, this isn't perfect. Yeah, but, but that's like God uses us. And we are thankful for what he uses and how he does it. Uh, the jawbone, the jawbone that Samson used, um, the five loaves and two fish. Um, Mary, the peasant woman, just simply saying, let it be unto me according to your word. In the high school today, we taught about doing difficult things. And I asked them to write a paper, a one-page paper, on what, what does it mean to do a difficult thing have you ever done a difficult thing? And what is it to do difficult things? And we, we talked about, this is just short for your, your thought, we have the comfort zone in life, and then you have, you have um, wisdom, and wisdom, wisdom leads us to be proactive. And um, we asked the class, what does it mean to be proactive? And one student said, it's the opposite of being reactive. Reactive, like, like reacting versus planning and preparing and being proactive in life. Like deciding way before, like thinking about life way before. So... 
It relates to a chapter in that little red book of wisdom by Mark de Moss. He called it the wisdom of first. Wisdom of first. For, you know, I mean, I better spell that out like that. Let's see, first. Okay, and it was, he had three of them. The first hour of the day, first hour of the day. And this is so that you can live a proactive life. What is it? First hour of the day. It's, it's surrender. It's yielding. It's an attitude. What is your will, Lord? My, my will is comfort zone. What's easy for me to do? What's convenient for me to do? My will is comfort zone. I do the things comfort food, comfort couch, comfort entertainment, comfort life, comfortable, and talk to only my friends or do the things I want. Immediate gratification, comfort zone. But, but the first hour of the day when you wake up in the morning, and there's a verse where God sent, he said, I sent prophets and rose up early in the day. They rose up, they rose up early in the day. Moses did, Joshua did, Jeremiah did. Jesus did, rose up early in the day. And there, there's where you can get your guidance, your prayers, your, your life. You're, you're doing things not comfortable, but you are doing things in what is his will? What's God's will for me? What is he saying to my heart? And I'm speaking to myself about this, you know, as well, of course. And it is... What would you have for me today, Lord? You know, what a beautiful attitude. It, it's, it may be difficult to re- listen to God or to obey God or to be guided by God, but it's the only way to live. And let him search our heart, search our heart in the beginning of the day, and then the, it says the steps of a righteous man will be ordered by the Lord. And he will lead us and give us guidance and give us words, words in our heart in the first power, hour of the day. The second one was the first day of the week. First day of the week is the Sabbath day. So we have another first, Sabbath what is the Sabbath? In, uh, in the, Isaiah 58 talks about the, the Sabbath that the Lord gives or the fasting that the Lord gives. He also speaks about the Sabbath there. there. The Sabbath is a day of rest, and I believe we need that. We need a day. We're not running around. We, we have a time. We have a period. We have a time when we change it up, we, we uh, defuse, we are rebooted, we are plugged in again, we are re- released and then back in, we are shut down and then we are restored and then we are back in. It has to do with our devotional, our uh, our quietness, our meditation, our reading. And I, I really encourage uh, the people that I minister to um, all the time to be um, readers and thinkers and meditate and trust and listen and receive direction, guidance. Without guidance, where will my life be? I will be reacting and maybe in my comfort zone, but will I ever get beyond myself? Will I get beyond my flesh? Will I get beyond my own way of life? Will I be spirit-filled as a way of life? Imagine being spirit-filled as a way of life. Isn't that amazing? Having love as a way of life. And when they 
the anomaly happens, not love, but jealousy. I recognize it. Okay, that, that's jealousy. Okay, I'm bringing that before God. God, I'm putting that, that right before you. Thank you. You're going to take care of this thing. You're going to root it out of me. You're going to deal with it. You're going to show me and guide me because I want your guidance in my life. Isn't that good? It is. It is. So the third first is the first dime of the dollar. First dime of the dollar. <clears throat> what does that mean? My money. My, my dollar. I give the Lord a dime. Here's the dime, Lord. The first dime of the dollar. As a way of life. It's like, it, it's so beautiful. It's not... It's not like an afterthought. It's preparation. It's preparation in my heart, in my mind. Rockefeller, John D. Rockefeller, who gave away in his lifetime the equivalent today of $10 billion. He gave away. And he tells when he was a poor boy, his mom gave him $1.50. And she said, now, John, I want you to I want, what are you going to do with the dollar fifty? And he's, yeah, he, he, you know, she said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to give 10% of it to the church. First thing, right off. He learned it as a boy. He learned that thing as a little boy. Later, when he became a billionaire, he did it. He did it all the time. I mean, there was a, a, spiritual, conver a spiritual change in his life. He wasn't always like that, but he changed. He had a spiritual revival in his life. So I'm just saying uh, in these uh, few thoughts here tonight that guidance is a very real thing in the kingdom of God, and God gives it to you. But you've also got to be listening to it, and you also have to be prepared in your heart to say, Lord, I, I have my comfort zone and my way of life and my way of thinking. And the Lord says to us, I want you to change that up. I want you to do sometimes what I'm asking you to do is difficult. Are you available? And you say yes. I mean, if you are, you say yeah. But you, you can say yes when the first hour of the day Yes, I'm available. I'm listening. Then when we're in the church and we are hearing these kind of things for instruction and guidance in life, and I, I mean, uh, you know, these folks, young folks that were on the stage, I have to give their parents credit, of course. You give the Holy Spirit is the one that does this work in the heart. In the darkest hour, of people's lives. Are you just going to do what is easy or comfortable, or are you going to learn another way? And that's the wisdom, as he says in that chapter, the wisdom of the first. It's a good, good title. So then as we learn to live in the Spirit, get the guidance from the Spirit and the mind and the heart of God in the Spirit, then we, we really uh, we do well. Let's read it here, and we'll, I'll finish. Philippians 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. That's a message in itself, isn't it? Let your moderation or your, your, your ability to balance, it's another message, verse 5, I think I should have started in verse 6. These are all great, but be careful for nothing, no anxiety. Yield it up. Yield it up to the Lord. Don't have any anxiety, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. Now, months ago, we started to pray for Eurocon. We had a marriage get away. God answered the prayer. We had the Eurocon. 
hundreds of people, Eurocon. God answered the prayer. We came back to America. We're just speechless in, in a way. Thank you, Lord. That was amazing. Then the Easter play. And the Easter play came. And, and the, the body of Christ and the peace and the quiet burning in the heart and the joy. And the Lord answered prayer. He did again. And then with regards to missions in the world, one soul, one soul. Imagine one new area, one village, one new city. Imagine with somebody whose life is changed by the Holy Spirit. What's your method? It's just prayer and the word and love and guidance from God. One Korean pastor, uh, he had a million people in his church. Maybe you've read about these. The six largest churches in the world are in Korea with a million people. Maybe you've read about it. It's amazing. So the, somebody interviewed that pastor, and he said, what do you do every day? He said, I go before God in prayer, and I say, God, what do you want me to do? And then he gives me guidance, and then I do what he wants me to do. Wow, I took that personally, and I think that's so simple. A million people to pastor, but how do you do it? It's like, go to God. And, and of course, we don't have that, and that's not my point. My point is, how do you live your life? How do you and I live our lives? And, and that's, this is how we find this strength and this peace. Look at the text. And the peace of God, verse 7, which passes all understanding. There, there comes the peace of God, which passes all understanding. You know that some people may look at your life and just say, how do you do it? And you just say, this is how it happens. Or somebody would say, you know, I could never do that. I could never do that. And, and we would all say, yes, uh, we understand that. That's for sure. There's many things we can, And that's good for We're not saying it like that. We're only saying that prayer is powerful. Prayer is answered. Prayer does affect young people. Prayer does send missionaries out on the field. Prayer does bring money into the church. Prayer does heal somebody's emotions or mind. Prayer is answered. That, that somebody has a hindering spirit or something plaguing them as a continually and they can't get rid of it. And how prayer can remove that thing. And Jesus said men ought always to pray and not faint. But we do. We can faint because... We get afraid or we get nervous or worried or, um, and those kind of things. So verse 7, this is a great uh, text here. The peace of God passes understanding shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Anybody here ever thought you're going crazy <laughs> about it? Maybe am I losing my marbles? Am I going crazy? Okay. That's happened to me. But then I have this verse. Honestly, I go back, I go back to this verse. I go, I go, Jesus said that he will keep our hearts and our minds. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that beautiful? I mean, I, I, that's how I read it. He will keep our hearts and our minds healthy. That will be healthy people. Yeah, that we will have, like what Pastor Taggart shared, that heart of thanksgiving and that heart of appreciation and the heart of like joy and thanksgiving and, and answered prayer and give gifts from God and joy and purpose in life. And it's easy. The yoke is easy. It is. It's not heavy. It's harder to be a sinner and to live in sin than it is to be a Christian and walk in the Spirit. Walking in the Spirit is the gift of God to you and me. It's a way of life. And that happens to us. We learn how to walk in the Spirit. And this is what happens to us. 
um, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just. So be careful not to put all kinds of garbage in your mind and heart. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. Sometimes you, there's something that comes up on TV and you, it's turn it off or walk away. Or, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. There might be some news that you hear or something. And, and of course, we're not escaping reality, but when I have a choice, I, that, that, that's, a, that's a good lesson here. So wh whatever things are pure, lovely, whatever is a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. So I'm thinking on these very good things that we can see around us. So, amen. Uh, Pastor Chris, just come on up, do whatever you want to do to share with us, okay? All right, let's all stand. Psych? No, we don't have to. I just wanted to use that word in the pulpit. How many of you remember that word, huh? Yeah. Psych? All right, um, just a few minutes. Uh, just to wait. We can just build on what we heard. And um, <clears throat> I just love that idea that God calls us to do something that might be uncomfortable and something that might be beyond us. And uh, the, when, as I was listening to Pastor Shower, the verses that I thought of are in Matthew chapter 26, when Jesus goes to the Garden of Gethsemane. And he asks um, the disciples, come with me a little bit. Amen? Well, let's pray. Since we're talking about prayer, that would be fitting if we pray. All right, Lord... Direct us. Um, you want to speak to your church, and we would ask that we would be your vessels, and you have something to say to us in, these, in this time, Lord, and that it would encourage us and build us up. In Jesus' name, amen. And so, in Matthew 26, he says to the disciples, watch and pray. And the verse that really touch me is in, in verse 39, and Jesus, it's talking about Christ, and Jesus went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed. And I think that's what prayer is, as I'm learning it. Um, God calls you just a little farther. He says, just come a little farther. And, you know, many times we fall asleep, and Jesus said to the disciples, you know, could you not watch with me for just one hour? And the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And this is like the story of the human race, and it's our story, where we say, God, I want to, but I'm so weak. I want to pray. I want that communion with you. And Pastor Schauer said it the other day, I think it was Sunday night, it's just like you're sitting in the car, and you are just talk to God. And I, I, that used to happen to me in Africa, just, I would walk, our house wasn't far from where we would do our evangelism, and I would just walk there and say, hey, God, this is our time. May, I'll just, won't say anything. I'll just, if you have anything to say, I'll just listen. Maybe you don't even say anything, but I'm just quiet before God. And Christ would say, like, just come a little farther, a little farther in your prayer life with me. And Luke 18.1 is where Jesus says, men always should pray and not faint. But it's not, it's not so with my house, unfortunately. You know, that happened to King David in 2 Samuel 23, verse 5. He says, like, God has showed me a king and a man of God should, should be just and should rule justly, but it's not so with my house. Like, I've had all this all these things that have gone wrong in our, my life, David says, but he's made for me an everlasting covenant. And that's what God does for us. And, 
And, you know, it's the Holy Spirit in us that says, teach us to pray. That's what the disciples said in Luke 11, verse 1. They didn't say, teach us how to pray. They just said, teach us to pray. And, and God calls you and says, hey, take, just go a little farther, and then I will fill you. I'll guide you. I will direct you. I will empower you. You will get addicted to prayer. And um, I have this picture. I don't know if we can, if, if we can put it up. Okay, this, these are called guluwankulu. Okay, these, this could be the equivalent of like a witch doctor in West Africa. And um, it's supposed to be something cultural, but guluwankulu means like uh, the great dance. And in Malawian culture, the guys dress up with these costumes and they dance. And, you know, the world looks at it and says, this is cultural, we should celebrate this, but it's really, it's really charged with, like, demonic spirits. And what happens sometimes, and especially where our church is now, it's kind of a little bit away from the downtown and guys will run through, dressed like that, run through the neighborhoods with machetes, and they're, they're asking for money. And, you know, one time our church, like the, the front door, like the doors over there, they face to the main road. And while, maybe, while I was preaching one time on a Wednesday night like tonight, I saw a guy like this with two machetes out there and making all the kids run away. They all run up to him, and then he, he, he growls at them, and they run away. And to me, this is sometimes what prayer is like, like to confront. That, that's not an easy thing to do. It, there's a lot of a fear there's a, to, to confront the guluwankulu. I could never do it. When I was in Bible college in Ghana, similar there was, a, there was a witch doctor that came in, and he was, they were playing drums and everything. I, and he came and asked me for money, and like a deer, I just like handed over money. And I thought, oh, man, I was angry, like I was defeated. But God says, go a little farther, go a little farther, trust me. And then as I was preaching that time and on that Wednesday night, years later, uh, the, the translator, who's also the pastor, he said, hey, let's go out there and talk to that guy with the two machetes dressed crazy like that with all those colors. And I said, I, I can't, I can't, I'm afraid. He's got machetes, not even one, he's got two of them. He said, come on, let's go, let's go. So we, we went out, we dismissed the church. You know, usually we shake hands of everybody at the end of the service. We just went right out the door and the guy was right there, and we went right up to him. And thank God for Pastor Marlin, because he was like holding my hand. I, I, he just pulled me up there. And we just said to him, are you born again? Straight, straight at him. And you should have seen this guy. His name is, I remember his name. His name was David. King David, I called him. He took off his mask, and he said, no, I'm not born again. I said, what are you doing? You know, you're scaring children to give you money. And how about receive Christ and come to the church? And he prayed with us. He received Christ right there with his, with his whole guluwankulu uniform. But I think that's like what prayer is like. You know, there, the devil puts a huge barrier in front of you and saying, you can't do it. You know, maybe you're going to do it, but you're going to fail and you won't pray anymore. And God says, just, Jesus says, come a little farther. I know you're going to faint. I know men should always pray and not faint. But come, just trust me. I'll be with you. And Christ is like the Pastor Marlin that kind of drags you out to talk to the, you know, to the, the, the enemy. Go right in the enemy territory and speak to them. And you never know what happens. And in closing, We've done it once. I said to my kids, I said, hey, I want to pray with you, each one of you, before you go to bed. And we just sit down, even if it's five minutes, we pray together. And we did, and one of my daughters, we sat and talked for an hour about like the end time. She asked me like a bunch of different questions. It was just so sweet and so beautiful. I thought, man, why haven't we done this 
like every night, you know, but it's a school night, you know. But, <laughs> but I think if we can just say to God, like, God, teach me to pray. Just be honest with God. And I, I'll do it too, okay? That'll be our pinky promise. Um, and just say to God, what can God do in our life? You know, and I just think of, like, I was thinking, um, what's the greatest miracle that I've seen this year so far that happened in prayer? You know what the one is for me this year so far? Is like Mike Vieter. Many of us know Mike Vieter, who had a heart attack and a stroke. And like he's back teaching at the dojo. And I'm like, we prayed for him. We prayed for him to get healed. Like that's, that's amazing. Like that's the power of prayer. So I want that. God, give it to me. God, teach me to pray. And Christ will say, just come a little farther. I'll be with you. I'll pull you over there. You'll talk to the Guluam Kulu. Guess what? They're just going to melt in front of you. Because they, it's, it's like the devil's a roaring lion, but he's got no teeth. Can't bite. He's just loud. Right? He's like one of those small dogs that barks really loud, but their bite is like a little pinch. Oh, is that all you got? And we can just trust God and believe God. Amen? Amen. So, Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord. Lord, we pray for Guluwankulu everywhere that they would come to you. They would come to Christ. And give us, Lord, boldness to open our mouth to speak to people. <laughs> Maybe someone at your job looks like Guluwankulu, and you, and you are afraid to open your mouth to them. Just pray that Christ will just bring you up to them. It just seems hard, but just open your mouth and God will fill it. I promise you. And I'll do the same thing. I'll pray the same way. The person in Dunkin... There's Guluwan Kulu in Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> All right. So, Lord, maybe there's someone here that's never received Christ and is like David all the way in Malawi that had a, a, a mask on. Maybe you have a mask on. You're trying to hide from God, trying to hide behind maybe your own righteousness or trying to hide behind an appearance but Christ comes up to you and just meets you and says, I love you. Will you trust me? I've died for you. I've paid for your sins. I've risen from the dead to give you eternal life. Can you just trust me a little farther? Just take a little step. If you've never received Christ, just pray that prayer. Say, Jesus, I, I believe you. I trust you. Come in my life. And if that's your prayer for the first time, just put your hand up and put it down if you've never received Christ. Anybody on the internet? Now when I say it, it actually means something. I was saying it in Africa when there was no internet. <laughs> Is anybody on the internet? Raise your hand. So, amen. Amen. Can we stand and sing as we uh, leave this amazing service tonight? Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand, and everything around me is shaken. I've never been more glad. I put my faith in Jesus. He's never let me down. He's faithful. Still got joy in chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense. And I won't be going under. I'm not held by my own strength. So I build my life on Jesus. Sees that further me down. So 
As we dismiss, we're going to just ask some of the pastors to come in the front here, and anybody that would like to stay afterward and just have a word of prayer, uh, that can happen for you. And then we're going to just, this is the benediction where we just pray for all of us as we go. The wrap will be in 20 minutes. Anyone that was participating in the play, if you can just meet down in the front, you can get prayer from the pastors. And you could also pray for people since you were in the play, which was awesome. And then that wrap will start in 20 minutes, okay? And pray. let's pray for, there's some conferences that are happening in, in Africa this month. There's a, there's a conference in Malawi that's going to be in uh, a week and a half. And then there's a conference in Uganda. Uh, those are the two big ones that are happening in southern, South and East Africa. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, um, thank you, Lord, for what we've heard today, and that the prayer that we have is just communion with you, just talking to you, our Father, our friend, our brother, every single relationship that we need, you answer it, Lord, you're part of it, Lord, help us to seek you. And Lord, bless us as we go, protect us on the roads, all this rain, protect us, Lord, Um, touch, again, touch the families that lost loved ones in the key bridge collapse. Well, we pray that people's hearts will be soft to hear the gospel. And Lord, just open, open our mouths. Help us to open our mouths and speak to someone. Lord, by your spirit, nudge us in that direction, Lord. In your precious name we pray, amen.